Okay, I'm going to show you today my entry to the Hackaday uh, Trinket Everyday Carry Contest. So what I've got here, ignoring this, is a what I call a transponder. And what it is, if you look inside here, we've got a bunch of stuff crammed in a tiny case. We have a Trinket Pro with a uh, WiPo charger backpack from Adafruit. A little vibration sensor which I'm not using at this point but it's there in case I need it in the future and a uh, Nordic 2.4 gigahertz transceiver from SparkFun and of course this is a modified duck bill antenna and a LiPo battery so the purpose of this project is more aiming towards home automation um, kind of rough uh, distance detection and what we have here is a base station and the transceiver or the uh, transponder and what we are doing is measuring how much time it takes a signal to get sent from the base station to the transponder and back again. Now part of the reason I'm using the Nordic uh, transceivers is that they have a handy feature where this one will auto acknowledge in other words you can send your information from the base station to the transponder and without the microcontroller taking any action the transponder will automatically send a, a signal back acknowledging that it received it. So it kind of it's nice that it reduces the overhead we have to do here. We have to do less processing. It also makes it a lot more consistent sending information back and forth. So I'll show you a quick demo here. What we'll go ahead and do is plug in our base station, and what we're doing is just streaming data to a serial terminal, and we'll turn on our transponder. And this thing is small. This is a double or triple A battery case. So now. What we're looking for is, let's see, I'm using uh, a data logger from Parallax. They have a, this PLX DAQ. It's pretty useful for um, streaming serial data and getting into Excel and being able to view it live. So in this case, we're going to clear columns. We'll go and connect. And so what we're doing is I'm sending approximately five or 600 um, transmissions back and forth and logging the average of how long it took that to this to uh, occur now once you factor in averaging doing standard deviation to kind of root out all the uh, oddball variables you get some pretty pretty steady uh, signals as you can see here actually I need to pick my head up more so this is right next to the the base station obviously it's the lowest value I haven't done any sort of conversions yet to make that work for um, for feet or anything like that, we're just reading raw values. So now if I take the transponder and move it, you know, let's just say four feet away, we'll see that right off the bat we're picking up to a higher value. Now the key thing to point out here though is that this isn't really linear. We, we do steps. We go from one to the other to the next and up and up and up. And so really we can only reasonably measure from say zero to one foot one to four, something within that range. You're not going to know if you're at two, three, two feet, three feet, or four feet. You just know if you're between one and four. And that tends to get larger the further away you get. So you can see here, I mean, just me sitting in between the antennas can actually induce some error, but for the most part, it's pretty consistent. So if we go ahead and move this a little bit further yet, and I don't know if I can do it in this room. So this is about 14 feet, and don't mind the mess. I'll just lay this over here. No, I'm not to go further yet. This is kind of the crutch of this is that it's not it's not overly um, accurate, but with multiple base stations it could be a lot better. So let's move this out here. And as you can see we've moved to our, our next iteration right there. So it's it's always one step to the next. I haven't figured out a way to get the Arduino to really measure tight enough. I'm not sure why we step and, and why it's such a jump, you know what I mean? So there's still some data crunching to do left, but for the most part, you at least have a good proof of concept that this does work. Uh, and like I said, with more than one base station, you could get some reasonably accurate data. Once again, I'm not really focusing here. It's hard to see my cell phone in the at the same time. There we go. Well, as you can see, this is when we were right next to the base station. This is about four feet away. 
Now we're closer to, let's say, 14, almost 20 feet. And if I go ahead and bring the transponder back, say hello, my dog. Unfortunately, people are trying to sleep. So we bring them back in. And as you can tell, we're right back to where we started. And there's going to be a little bit of variance. The big thing here is, and what we could really improve upon, is to actually do what you call multi channel. And actually, even here, you can see we're still jumping around a little bit. Some of it has to do with how good of a signal it's receiving. But reading some of the white papers, multiple channels can actually produce more consistent results. I don't know if I'll be able to see here. So, what we've got is a basic code. And all we're doing is initializing the transceiver, sending it some initial data. Actually, this is the transponder, wrong one, receiver. So, initializing, setting up the timer, and then what we do here is in this section of code, it's just hammer the crap out of it. So, about as fast as we can, we're doing about a one millisecond delay in between each sample, but we're looking for at least 500 samples or so to give some decent data. And then once that's done, we take that array that we dumped all the results into and perform some standard deviation measurements and then averaging. So in all in all, it works pretty decently. It's um, definitely works better than I thought it would. It took a long time to get it kind of hashed out. But for the most part, as far as proof of concept, I think this works pretty well. With additional data crunching, I believe we could go further and really refine that data to something more usable. Enjoy.